We were just playing with how to make the one-step buttonhole on the Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25, but now how about how do we sew buttons on with this machine? Now we're doing all the free video tutorials on the Husqvarna Viking Onyx 25, and you'll find a link to the complete playlist in the YouTube description below. So if you want to start at the beginning and then watch all the videos in order, click on that link and start binge watching today. So buttons and buttonholes can have come a long way when we talked about our Stitching Cosmos online course, the quilt that where every block is a different technique. We've talked about how to do buttonholes and use them for other things like even weaving ribbon through them. So something a little bit more decorative. And when we get to actually stitching buttons on, we've actually combined that lesson with a whole bunch of things like tassels. So that's a whole nother section that we will be going into. But just knowing some of the basics of how to do button holes and sewing on buttons is ideal no matter what level or skill level you're at. I'm always a fan for after you do button holes is to leave a button in the back of your foot so you're reminded that that will be what helps you measure and learn how to do the one step button hole. But sewing buttons on, oh by the way I love to store this foot in the back so it's kind of out of my way. When we're sewing a button on though, we are needing some type of stitch to go in the holes, but not move forward. So what are we thinking? We're thinking about a zigzag, of course, and our stitch length can be put at zero, so it's just going back and forth, but we don't want those feed dogs, the teeth underneath the foot, to actually come up and be touching our fabric. So I'm a big fan of actually sliding off the accessory box, reaching behind the machine, and there's a lever back here, so peek behind. There's a lever that lowers the feed dogs down. So we've done a video on that for you to learn more about it and which way to, to push the lever. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and push it to the right, and you're gonna hear a click. There's the click. Now here's a note about feed dogs. When we're done sewing buttons on, we need to remember, number one, to bring them up. So if you're running away because you've sewed your buttons on and you're not back here for a couple weeks or a month, you will probably forget that these feed dogs are down. You go to sew a straight stitch and all it's doing is going up and down. So I'm a fan of leaving yourself maybe a sticky note until you get used to that, <laughs> to bring your feed dogs up when you're done. But here's the note, when you move that lever to the left, so I'm gonna do it, nothing happens. Those feed dogs do not come up until you actually take a stitch. Here, I'll just cycle through by hand the stitch. There we go, and now those teeth are up. So you can do that so you can visually see them, or you can just sew a little straight stitch when you're done sewing buttons, and then that way for sure you know everything's kind of back to normal. So we're pushing the feed dogs back down, push that lever, to the right and down they are. Okay, next, you can put this in and then like underneath your presser foot, try to line up the holes. But here's a little trick with this machine. You can actually do it without a foot at all. So take your foot off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the ankle, the little white ankle there, and we're gonna lower it down on the button. So I'm gonna show you which and which of those holes to do first, if you have a button with four holes like we do today, and then also what stitch width should we be at? So there's not really a technique down on this cute little like pull out thing for sewing buttons on, but let's talk about the stitch width we need for those holes. So those holes are about three and a half millimeters wide, three and a half to four, so somewhere in there would be great. Uh, you're always gonna test, most buttons are the same distance. That's an optical illusion, because as you look at bigger buttons, they'll look bigger, and smaller buttons will look smaller. And there are some teeny ones, and there's some ginormous ones, but like 99% of all buttons have the same width. Now, what we do need to do is I am looking at the machine's needle right now. Because this is a mechanical machine, that needle could actually be over on the left side 
or over on the right side, just depending on where you stopped the last time you sewed. So right now I see the needle is a little bit more to the left. So what I'm gonna do is hand turn the needle into the left hole. And I'm actually gonna do the holes that are closest to me when I'm doing a four holer, get those secured first, and then I can move back and do the second pair second. Okay, so if I want, let's just go ahead, bring and sink that needle down into the hole, take the presser foot lifter and lower it down. Now just make sure that you have tested this before you just step on the foot control. So I like to take my hand wheel and swing to the side. If the needle goes into the hole, which it did, you're ready to stitch about eight to 10 stitches back and forth. So you can just go ahead, however many times you wanna do it. And sometimes if I have four holes like I do today, I'll just leave that thread connected and then just lift up the presser foot, slide the white ankle back so it kind of sits a little bit further back. And, oh, a little bit more, that's why we test. And then bring the needle down, test the swing, and then stitch a similar amount of stitches and you're all set. Bring your needle all the way to the highest position and your buttonhole is done. Okay, now I haven't ever sewed buttons on with variegated thread, I don't think. But look, because of the location of thread I used, I have one that is pink and one that is purple. How fun is that? Okay, so there you go. Have some fun with variegated thread and sew buttons on. So super easy at this point. You didn't even need to put on a presser foot at all. Just lower it down, test the swing of the needle, and stitch. Now the last thing we're gonna do after we sew a button on, is what we need to uh, come back here and bring those feed dogs back up. And I'll show you how I secure my uh, threads. At this point, I might just put a little bit of fray check or fabric glue on these um, thread areas. It'll dry and then I can cut these really close or I can pull these to the back side, give them a little tug bring the thread to the backside and then just tie it off. So that's another way that you can do this. So just kind of tug, bring the thread from the front. There it is. See how that loop is coming through? That's the thread from the top. And then I'll just tie these two, give that a couple, oh, two or three ties just by hand. And then I can cut them short and I don't even have to worry about those. The other one didn't really want to come through because it kind of got stitched over. So I can just take my scissors on the front and cut it short. So I don't have to worry about that button threads ever coming loose and it is completely secure. So try some button holes, try sewing on some buttons. And here we've been playing with some of the decorative stitches that are on this machine, which are absolutely fabulous. So if you're looking for more things to do with your machine, that Husqvarna Viking Stitching Cosmos online course, every block is a different sewing technique to help you master your machine inside and out. So check out the links below in the description description of this YouTube video to learn more about that course.